This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. It's been a busy summer in Cape Girardeau, and here to talk about some summer news items is Cape Girardeau City Manager Scott Meyer. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Uh, first thing, let's talk a little bit about Cape Girardeau's uh, new police chief. Um, he'll be replacing uh, Carl Kinnison, who, who retired last year. Who is the, who is the new police chief, and, uh, and what's he bring to the table? Well, his name is Wes Blair. He comes from, uh, from Texas, and, uh, and, and really think he was going to bring a, uh, a new perspective. Uh, obviously, we, we already have a, a very solid, professional uh, police department, and uh, he hopes to, uh, to really connect with that and uh, see our strengths, see the opportunities for maybe some different things uh, uh, from his experiences, and really just uh, magnify and uh, make, make good use of them and, uh, and increase our policing. Oh, now, what, what are some of the skills and experiences that he has that really kind of took, takes, you know, took him to, a, to another level for the city? Well, I think one of the big things uh, for Wes is that he's, he's a really good communicator, and he, and he puts a lot of importance on communication. Uh, communication with the community, really connecting with the community, uh, building uh, connections not just with businesses, certainly with businesses, but not just with citizens, certainly with citizens, but then also uh, throughout the community and and then the real, really also the importance of communication within the department. Uh, so much of crime and crime investigation now, it really is about putting the pieces together. And, uh, and so he really puts a high value on communication. Like I said, we have a great professional staff now, so how, we, how can we make it better? Well, maybe uh, a big part of that is through communication. Now, also this summer, the city has been looking for two new assistant city managers. Uh, Heather Brooks and Kelly Green both, both left for other opportunities. Um, kind of tell us a little bit about uh, what you're looking for in these positions, what their role is, and kind of the, the job that, that both Heather and, and Kelly did for the city during their time here. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to have another Heather and Kelly, <laughs> you know, um, and that really speaks to uh, how much they gave to the city. Um, you know, they really... Uh, poured not just uh, you know their their profession into the into the community, but they really poured their lives into the community. Uh, they were involved, uh, had a lot of passion for uh, outstanding customer service, for uh, really being involved in the community, and just really making Cape better. I mean, that's really our the goal of all of us as public servants is just to make uh, where we live, uh, where we work, uh, to make that better. Um, so we're pouring our lives into that. They were they were really just uh, an exemplary in that fashion. Let's talk a, a little bit about uh, Commander Premier. Uh, where are we at right now with uh, with, with that situation? Well, uh, it, it's gone through bankruptcy and uh, and through all of that, and and uh, of course we also did uh, uh, with our lease we uh, evicted them, and and of course all of that. Uh, through bankruptcy court, you can't actually push their stuff out the door, and so uh, we've been housing their stuff. But uh, also, that puts us as a debtor in the in the bankruptcy court. Um, it's taken a long time, but you know we had to start, uh, or it would just still take the same amount of time. So we are moving closer to uh, really the the bankruptcy court uh, taking some bids and and really beginning to look at what they can get from their assets. Once that is determined and once that's awarded, then they will. Uh, look at the debtors, and then there's a kind of a pecking order in the bankruptcy court, and then uh, they will split up what the what the assets bring. Now the city has a few um, sales taxes that'll that'll be expiring uh, in the coming months uh, and into the spring. Um, the, there's the hotel, motel, restaurant, mm -hmm. and uh, a fire tax. Um, Still, where these taxes are going in the future is still a, a little bit uncertain. But can you kind of give us a, a background on where these taxes came from and, and what they've been what they've been used for in the past? Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, the hotel motel tax, which is a four percent tax on on hotel um, uh, receipts, is a um, uh, pri that along with the restaurant tax, which is one percent gross receipts tax. Uh, those have gone uh, over the past to pay for um, the Osage Center, for Shawnee Park, for uh, the Show Me Center, uh, and River Campus, among other things, but built some big projects, as well as uh, the other thing it has done is uh, paid for our Convention and Visitors Bureau. So uh, certainly there's a need to continue the, the Convention and Visitors Bureau with a town our size and so dependent upon people coming to our, our regional hub uh, that's really an important part. So I think pretty well we have unanimity on that. 
that we need to continue uh, the hotel motel tax in order to pay for the CVB. And, and that's something that's paid almost entirely by folks outside of Cape Girardeau. Sure, very few people in, in Cape uh, use a hotel, but I guess they, at times they, they might, but uh, for the most part, you know, well in the upper 90s, paid for by people outside our city. So that's, that's uh, an important part of that. The 1% gross receipts tax to restaurants um, people in town certainly go to restaurants, but uh, it is it is probably a majority of the people are, are out of town that uh, that do that. So um, one of the discussions that has been happening is exactly um, if if we think of the hotel motel as paying for the CVB, then if if we continue the restaurant tax, and you know it's it's a question if because voters will decide that, uh, then where should that be used? And some think that we should use that continue to do that for tourism. But some think maybe our highest need is not a tourism need because we've had the uh, parks tax and we've had the casino uh, have come to town, which already bring a lot of people to town. Maybe our, our highest need is the police uh, station. Um, so it's really continuing that discussion and uh, really coming down to what to put in front of voters to, to decide because ultimately they will decide. Let's talk about uh, what, one more thing, and uh, this something that this happened this summer. We had a couple of high-profile uh, businesses close uh, in Cape Girardeau. Uh, the, the call center, formerly known as NARS, as well as uh, um, uh, Poly One, uh, mm -hmm. which used to be owned by Spartech. Mm -hmm. um, now, as I understand it, um, the city did not provide any type of economic incentives for for uh, for NARS to locate here. Um, what, what, what's kind of the, the, the role, though, of, of economic incentives for companies to, 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 to locate in cities? How are they, how, how, how are they used? Well, we, we kind of treat it as a, on a case-by-case -case basis. And so we work with Magnet and we work uh, through developer agreements and through our council to determine kind of on a case-by-case -case basis what we're going to do. And, um, you know, just to be clear on NARS, yes, um, you know, some a CID or a, or a tax, they basically tax themselves within that district basically the plaza area, they've put an extra tax on themselves to help pay for the, um, the upgrade of the buildings in, in that area, and, and that was, a, of course, used to upgrade the, the building that NARS eventually rented. So there was, not a direct, there was not a direct anything from the city, but they did tax themselves on that. They also did a developer's agreement that said the extra tax that they do, they could use to do public improvements. So uh, for for water, for sewer, for streets, things like that, they they were able to do do that. But it was all based on the extra tax, not on the baseline tax. So those taxes were in place, but all those taxes went to the developer, not to NARS directly. So these were so basically, so it's that way those improvements stay in the yes. stay in the city despite the the, the, the company actually. Absolutely. Actually so it's, then it's great to make uh, an effort then to bring somebody new into that space. And so so that that that's uh, that's how that was uh, the the poly. One is a, is a similar situation. Uh, the city did no direct to, to Poly One. I think there was uh, some state aid to, uh, to, to them to come in, which is tied to jobs. And so if the jobs leave, so does the, uh, so does the, the uh, uh, incentive. We've been talking today with Scott Meyer. He's Cape Girardeau City Manager. Thank you so much for coming by. It's always good to be here.